the theme of my talk is healthy heart for life humans have many ways to maintain homeostasis the state of relative stability of the body's internal environment disruptions to homeostasis often set in motion corrective cycles called negative feedback systems that help restore the conditions needed for health and life levels of body organization the levels of organization of a language letters of the alphabet words sentences paragraphs and so on provide a useful comparison to the levels of the organization of the human body from the smallest to the largest size of their components six levels of organization are relevant to under, understand anatomy and physiology they are the chemical cellular tissue or tissue organ system and organismal levels of organization the chemical level includes atoms the smallest units of the matter that participate in chemical reactions and molecules two or more atoms join together certain atoms such as carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus calcium and sulfur are essential for maintaining life two two familiar examples of molecules found in the body are dna the genetic material passed from one generation to the next and glucose commonly known as blood sugar at the cellular level molecules combine to form cells the basic structural and functional units of an organism cells are the smallest living units in the human body among many kinds of cells in your body are smooth muscle cells nerve cells and epithelial cells the next level of structural organization is the tissue level tissue are groups of cells and the material surrounding them that work together to perform a particular function there are just four basic types of the tissues in your body epithelial tissue connective tissue muscle tissue and nervous tissue at the organ level different kinds of tissues are joined together organs are structures that are composed of two or more different types of tissues they have specific functions and usually have recognizable shapes examples of organs are the stomach heart liver lungs and brain the next level of structural organization in the body is the system level a system consists of related organs that have a common function an example is the digestive system which breaks down and absorbs food its organ its organs include the mouth salivary glands pharynx that's throat esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine liver gall bladder and pancreas the largest organizational level is the organismal is the organismal level an organism is any living individual 
all the parts of the human body functioning together constitute the total organism one living person cardiovascular system components include blood heart and blood vessels the functions of the system include heart pumps blood through blood vessels blood carries oxygen and nutrients to cells and carbon dioxide and wastes away from cells and helps regulate acid base balance temperature and water content of the body fluids blood components help defend against disease and mend damaged blood vessels homeostasis is the condition of equilibrium in the body's internal environment it occurs due to the ceaseless interplay of all the body's regulatory processes hemo homeostasis homeostasis is a dynamic condition in response to changing conditions the body's equilibrium point can change over a narrow range that is compatible with maintaining life for example the level of glucose in blood normally stays between 70 and 110 mg of glucose per 100 ml of blood each body structure from the cellular level to the systemic level contributes in some way to keeping the internal environment within normal limits most cells of a multicellular organism cannot move around to obtain to obtain oxygen and nutrients or eliminate carbon dioxide and other wastes instead these needs are met by two fluids blood and interstitial fluid blood is a connective tissue composed of a liquid matrix called plasma that dissolves and suspends and suspends various cells and cell fragments interstitial fluid is the fluid that bats that bats body cells blood transports oxygen from the lungs and nutrients from the gastrointestinal tract to the body to the body cells the oxygen and nutrients diffuse from the blood into the interstitial fluid and then into the body cells carbon dioxide and other wastes move in the reverse direction from body cells into the interstitial fluid and then into the blood location of the heart for all its might the cone shaped heart is relatively small roughly the same size as a closed fist that's about 12 cm long 9 cm wide at its broadest point and 6 cm thick its mass averages 250 grams in adult females and 300 grams in adult males the heart rests on the diaphragm near the midline of the thoracic cavity it lies in the mediastinum a mass of tissue that extends from the sternum to the vertebral column between the lungs about two thirds of the mass of the heart lies to the left of the body's midline The wall of the heart consists of three layers: the epicardium, that's external layer; the myocardium, which is middle layer; and the endocardium, that's inner layer. The heart has four chambers. The two superior chambers are the atria, and the lower inferior chambers are the ventricles. 
on the anterior surface of the each atrium is a wrinkled pouch like structure called an auricle so named because of its resemblance to a dog's ear each auricle slightly increases the capacity of an atrium so that it can fold a greater volume of blood also on the surface of the heart are a series of grooves called sulci that contain coronary blood vessels and a variable amount of fat each sulcus marks the external boundary between two chambers of the heart the deep coronary sulcus encircles most of the heart and marks the boundary between the superior atria and the inferior ventricles the anterior interventricular sulcus is a shallow groove on the anterior surface of the heart that marks the boundary between the right and the left ventricles the sulcus continues around to the posterior surface of the heart as the posterior interventricular sulcus which marks the boundary between the ventricles and the posterior aspect of the heart as each chamber of the heart contracts it pushes a volume of the blood into the ventricle or out of the heart into an artery valves open and close in response to pressure changes as the heart contracts and relaxes each of the four valves helps ensure the one way flow of the blood by opening to let blood through and then closing to prevent the back flow of the blood the cardiac cycle a single cardiac cycle includes all the events associated with one heartbeat thus a cardiac cycle consists of systole and diastole of the atria plus systole and diastole of the ventricles in each cardiac cycle the atria and ventricles alternately contract and relax and relax forcing blood from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure as a chamber of the heart contracts blood pressure within it increases each ventricle expels the same volume of blood per beat and the same pattern exists for both pumping chambers when heart rate is 70 by beats per minute a cardiac cycle lasts 0.8 second how your heart works you probably already know that your heart pumps blood throughout your body but you may not know how complex its working really are your heart has four separate chambers and four valves that function as one way doors to keep blood flowing in the proper direction your heart has its own electrical system that triggers each heartbeat your heart pumps about 5 quarts of blood in a minute and beats about 100000 times a day it supplies not only its own tissues with blood but every cell in your body through a closed network of 60000 miles of arteries veins and capillaries maintaining this blood supply to every part of your body is what makes heart health so important the coronary arteries run through the myocardium ensuring that your heart receives enough oxygen to continue pumping effectively your heart has a built-in electrical wiring system that triggers a heartbeat a regular coordinated cycle causing your heart's chambers to relax and contract and pump blood the cycle begins in the sinus node sometimes called your heart's natural pacemaker the sinus node is actually a group of the cells located in your right atrium the cells at the node cause 
an electric impulse which then spreads along pathways of specialized tissue in the heart to coordinate the heartbeat. The area of the atrioventricular node collects the signals and transmits them to the two ventricles. The AV node is like a gatekeeper. It can slow down the heartbeat if the upper chambers are beating too fast or work as a pacemaker if the sinus node is not functioning properly. The electric impulses spread to the muscle of your ventricles making your heart beat. Circulation begins when blood from your veins enters the right atrium. This blood has supplied oxygen to your cells and picked up carbon dioxide and waste from your body. From the right atrium of your heart, blood moves through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. With each heartbeat, with each heartbeat, blood is pushed through the pulmonary valves and travels to the lungs, where it will deposit carbon dioxide and pick up fresh oxygen. Blood travels through tiny blood vessels known as capillaries in your lungs. The capillaries resemble tiny webs that surround air sacs, that's alveoli. When you inhale, oxygen enters your windpipe trachea and fills the alveoli. Carbon dioxide, a waste product, is released through the capillaries into the alveoli and exhaled out through your windpipe. Oxygen in the alveoli is picked up by the capillaries. Blood color turns from blue to red because it is, it is now full of oxygen, the fuel of your body. Your blood enters the left atrium from your lungs, then goes through the mitral valve to the left ventricles. The ventricle pumps your blood through the aortic valve and into the aorta to the rest of your body. Your heart pumps oxygen-rich blood to your arteries and then to the tiny blood vessels called capillaries. These capillaries tiny blood vessels similar to the one is shown. These capillaries, tiny blood vessels, ensure that your body cells receive oxygen and nutrients. Your blood, your blood deposits oxygen in tissue cells as it travels through the capillaries. The oxygen depleted blood now carries waste products such as carbon dioxide back to your heart. Back in the heart, the process begins again. Your blood is reoxygenated and recirculated through your body. Your heart has important connections to the rest of your body. Your brain can signal your heart to speed up or slow down and regulate the blood pressure in your circulatory system if necessary. If you are in an emergency, your brain can cause your heart to circulate more blood to your body, giving you a burst of energy. The brain can signal your adrenal glands to release more hormones that speed up your heart rate. If you have if you have problems with your thyroid gland, your heart may speed up or slow down, affecting your heart's pumping function. What can go wrong? The flow of blood through your heart and circulatory system is an intricate process. Many things can go wrong inside and outside the heart. If blood flow is interrupted or irregular, Problems can develop quickly and cascade throughout the rest of your body. Many common forms of the heart disease can eventually lead to heart failure, meaning that your heart can't pump enough blood 
to meet your body's needs. Fortunately, most types of the heart disease can be prevented, slowed or even reversed by following the strategies which I will discuss later. Heart attack. A heart attack is one of the most dreaded and common complications of heart disease. A heart attack occurs when a coronary artery is suddenly blocked by a blood clot depriving part of the heart muscle of the blood. The tissue in this section is quickly damaged or dies. A heart attack is a medical emergency. If you or someone else thinks they might be having a heart attack, call for emergency medical assistance. Atherosclerosis Atherosclerosis is a progressive narrowing of your arteries due to the buildup of fat and other substances that form plaques. Although the exact cause is unknown, Atherosclerosis may start with damage or injury to an inner layer of the artery. The damage may be due to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, tobacco use, diabetes, inflammation or other causes. The process can happen anywhere in your body and can lead to coronary artery disease, heart attack and stroke. Developing atherosclerosis does not mean you are doomed to having these conditions. It is possible to slow or reverse the process and reduce your chance of complications. In any artery, plaques can form multiple narrowed areas, that is cetinosis or blockages, which is occlusions. These plaques limit blood flow. Some plaques become unstable, develop, developing cracks in the lining and rupturing which allows fat and other substances to pour into the artery. A blood clot forms where plaques rupture. The clot can completely block blood flow through the vessel, causing a heart attack. High blood pressure. Your heart and blood vessels form a closed system called the circulatory system. When your heart pumps, it generates pressure in your blood vessels to move blood through your body. When your heart relaxes, the pressure in your body vessels decreases. The pressure created by this pumping action is your blood pressure. If the force of the blood against your artery walls is too high, it may eventually cause serious health problems such as heart disease. High blood pressure can cause complications throughout your body often occurring without symptoms. High blood pressure often develops hand in hand with atherosclerosis. High blood pressure is also known as the silent killer. Common complications of having both high blood pressure and atherosclerosis may include stroke, loss of vision, heart attack, kidney failure and peripheral artery disease which reduces blood flow to the legs. Heart function. Many conditions may interfere with your heart's pumping action. A normal heart pumps out about 70 cubic centimeters of blood with every beat. The ejection fraction is the percentage of the blood pumped out of the heart each time it contracts. Since the heart does not empty completely, the ejection fraction is never 100%. Instead, it is normally between 50 and 70%. The remaining 50 to 30% remains in the ventricle. If your heart muscle weakens, it can't pump as much blood with each beat. That forces the heart to beat faster to meet your body demands. Over time, 
the heart usually tries to compensate by enlarging to fill with more blood the result that is the lower left is an enlarged weakened heart pumping a reduced amount of blood with each beat in this example only about 40 cc of blood heart failure untreated heart disease of any kind and other non cardiac conditions such as severe infections can make the heart too weak or too stiff to pump effectively when the heart the does not pump enough blood to meet your needs blood often backs up and causes fluid to build up in your lungs congestion and in your legs causing your legs to swell and turn blue from lack of oxygenated blood flow it's known as cyanosis this fluid in your lungs can make you short of breath this is worse at night when more blood returns back to the heart coronary artery disease if your mind draws a blank when you hear coronary artery disease maybe this will get you get your attention it is the major culprit behind the heart attacks heart disease is the leading cause of death of both men and women in developing nations and also in developing countries and the most common form of heart disease is coronary artery disease the coronary arteries provide your heart muscle with a steady supply of blood the oxygen and nutrients in blood give your heart the energy to do its job that's continuously pumping blood out to your lungs and to other parts of your body when the arteries become damaged or blocked particular partially or completely the condition is the condition is known as coronary artery disease coronary artery disease starts with small changes in the inner layer of the coronary artery when cells become damaged or injured and stop working properly Possible causes of this damage include smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes infection, diabetes infections, even the aging process. Any kind of injury in your body typically triggers inflammation. Once the inner layer of an artery is damaged, fatty deposits plaques tend to accumulate at the site of the injury. The plaques contain cholesterol and other substances. As plaques form, the artery wall thickens deposits of plaques build up gradually narrowing the channel and reducing blood flow this process is called atherosclerosis your heart may get enough blood to fuel normal activities but when it has to work harder such as during exercise it needs more blood and the arteries can't meet the demand treatment of coronary artery disease starts with lifestyle changes that provide a solid foundation for heart health it is crucial that you control high blood pressure high cholesterol and diabetes the doctor will likely recommend aspirin to reduce blood clotting and prescribe drugs to lower cholesterol or control blood pressure Medications to treat angina such as nitroglycerin and beta blockers are often prescribed. If more aggressive treatment is needed, you will likely continue taking medications. Coronary angioplasty. With the more aggressive treatment, your doctor reopens the clogged channel by inflating a tiny balloons balloon that is inserted into the artery by a long thin tube then a small wire wire mesh tube that is stent the stent is often placed to keep the channel open coronary bypass procedure may be called for if you have severe blockage in it 
a section of the healthy blood vessel is taken from another part of your body and attached above the above and below the blockage this forms an alternate route for blood to flow complications of coronary artery disease include heart attack heart failure abnormal heart rhythm known as arrhythmia and sudden cardiac death how can heart attacks be prevented you may wonder about preventive screening for coronary artery disease to try and prevent heart attacks from ever happening with all the medical advances why not just send some people to a lab to look for plugged arteries and when they are found unblock the arteries with stents it's it isn't as easy at as it sounds when a heart attack occurs sometimes something has caused the plaques something has caused the plaques lining your arteries to become unstable these plaques can rupture which triggers the formation of a blood clot the clot can be big enough to block the artery causing a heart attack however plaques are usually present at many locations in your coronary arteries and there there is no test that can tell your doctor at which location a rupture is most likely to take place in addition contrary to what you might think many heart attacks happen in areas where not as much narrowing of your arteries has occurred rather than in areas where the most build up of plaques is located even if you have had stents placed or had coronary bypass surgery you are not cured placing a stent placing a stent at one location won't prevent plaques from bursting and forming a clot somewhere else in the artery inserting multiple stents may not be effective because it is too difficult to determine which plaques may rupture the researchers are working on ways to predict which plaques are vulnerable to bursting and causing heart attacks the best defense against heart attacks and coronary artery disease is to have a good offense what is that what does that mean the most effective way to prevent heart attacks is to change your risk factors if you smoke stop smoking stop smoking maintain a healthy weight eat a healthy diet if you have diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol learn to control them if you need medications take them as prescribed and get moving heart failure sounds scary and to be sure it is a serious problem but it doesn't mean that your heart has totally stopped working rather it means your heart is not doing its job as well as it should the heart muscle has become too weak or too stiff to pump enough blood to meet your body's needs heart failure often develops after other conditions such as heart attack or arrhythmias have damaged the heart the main pumping chambers that's the ventricles become weakened and stretched that is dilated unable to pump blood with much force or the ventricles become stiff and don't fill with enough blood between heart beats causing blood to back up into the lungs liver abdomen or legs and feet causing congestion heart failure also may occur because your heart simply can't pump enough blood to meet the demand 
A variety of medical conditions can reduce your heart's ability to pump blood effectively. Heart failure can involve the left side, right side or both sides of your heart. Causes include coronary artery disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, faulty heart valves, birth defects of the heart, abnormal heart rhythm that's arrhythmias, myocarditis, cardiomyopathy that's dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Heart failure can be ongoing that's chronic or start suddenly with new or recurrent symptoms that's acute. Symptoms may include shortness of breath when you exert yourself or when you are lying down, fatigue and weakness, swelling in your legs, ankles and feet, rapid or irregular heartbeat, reduced ability to exercise, persistent cough or wheezing with white or pink phlegm, swelling of your abdomen, sudden weight gain, lack of appetite and nausea, difficulty concentrating or or decreased alertness. Causes of heart failure range causes of heart failure range in severity. Doctors sometimes can correct the underlying problem, but for most people, heart failure is a condition requiring lifelong management. A combination of the medications are used to improve your symptoms and heart functions and heart function and help you live longer. Lifestyle changes such as to diet and exercise are important as well. Some people with heart failure may benefit from, mal from implantable heart devices. These devices include implantable cardiovascular, cardio, cardioverter defibrillators implantable cardioverter defibrillators ICDs to prevent sudden cardiac death, special pacemakers to coordinate the electrical system of the heart, biventricular pacemakers or mechanical heart pump, left ventricular assist devices to improve blood flow. A healthy heart plan for heart failure. If you have heart failure, these steps can help you stay with your plan. Number one, treat salt as the enemy. Whatever pleasure they bring, salty foods just aren't worth it. Sodium aggravates the symptoms with heart failure because it draws more fluid into your bloodstream, increasing the total volume of blood in your system and making your already weakened heart work even harder. Educate yourself about the ways salt can creep into your diet. You can often reduce the amount of the salt you use simply by eating more fresh vegetables and fruits. Avoid high sodium foods such as many canned or baked goods, processed meats and cheese. Also be cautious about using salt substitutes. Some of these products may be high in potassium and your doctor might not recommend them. Number two, weigh yourself each morning before breakfast. Weight, ga weight gain can signal the start of congestion in your lungs, abdomen or legs. Learn to recognize symptoms that indicate heart failure in getting worse. Number three, watch how much you drink. With heart failure, too much fluid makes your heart work too hard. If you can imagine your heart as a pump, you need just enough fluid in your body to keep pump primed, but not so much as to flood the system. So if your doctor prescribes a certain amount of the 
fluid to drink every day, try not to exceed that limit. At the same time, don't risk dehydration. If you still feel thirsty, rinse your mouth with water often. Brush your teeth more often. Suck on sugar-free hard candy. Keep your lips moist with lip balm. Number four, exercise safely. If you have tried or short of breath, if you are tired, if you are tired or short of breath, you might not feel like bicycling or walking. But even people with heart failure and shortness of breath can benefit from regular activity, provided it is tailored to your condition. Ask your doctor what is right for you. Number five, pace yourself. Maintain about the same level of the daily activity and rest following difficult tasks. Try scoring activities from one to five, that means from light to hard. Never group fours and fives close together. Space them throughout the week. After morning chores, relax and avoid something else that's physically taxing until late afternoon. Whenever you are short of breath or tired from exercise, take a break. Even with severe heart failure, you can usually remain active as long as you are realistic in planning your schedule. Number six, watch your levels of potassium. Some heart failure medications can affect your body's level of the potassium, a mineral important for your heart health. Low potassium levels can cause dangerous heart rhythm problems. Talk to your doctor about any changes in your diet that might be needed because of the medications you are on. Number seven, get checked for sleep disorders. As many as half of the people with heart failure have sleep apnea. Despite this connection, sleep disorders often go undiagnosed in people with heart failure. One reason is that the symptoms of sleep apnea and heart failure often overlap, disguising the cause. Many people who have both conditions don't feel sleepy during the day, so they are not aware that they have a sleep disorder. Ask your doctor about the need to screen for conditions such as sleep apnea. Number eight, ask about family screening. Some types of cardiomyopathy may be inherited. Your doctor may recommend screening for family members, including a physical exam, electrocardiogram, echocardiogram, genetic screening, and genetic counseling. Early treatment can prevent heart failure and sudden death. Find out, number nine, find out if you need an ICD. Some people with heart failure or cardiomyopathy will have a higher risk of dangerous heart rhythms. An ICD monitors your heart rhythm and can treat dangerous life-threatening heart rhythms with pacing or by delivering an electrical shock. Vascular disorders. Your heart is not the only part of your body where atherosclerosis, high blood pressure and high cholesterol can take a toll. If you have blocked or narrowed arteries in your heart, you have an increased risk of vascular disease. The opposite also is true. If you have vascular disease, you have an increased risk of heart disease. Narrowed arteries in your heart can lead to chest pain and progress to a heart attack. And the effects elsewhere in your body can be just as detrimental. Narrowed arteries to your limbs, brain, kidneys or lungs can become serious health problems. Find out how tailoring the healthy heart plan to vascular 
disease can work for you. Vascular health and sex. Following the healthy heart plan can have greater benefits than a reduced risk of heart disease. For men, atherosclerosis and high blood pressure can also affect blood vessels in the penis, causing erectile causing erectile dysfunction. Because the arteries to the penis are narrower than those near your heart, erectile dysfunction may show up three to five years before life-threatening problems such as heart attack and stroke. Erectile dysfunction is a common condition. It affects about one out of five men, although there are medications to treat it. Following a heart-healthy lifestyle may reduce the need for those medications or may help those medications work better. If you have already taken erectile dysfunction medications and they become less effective, that should be a sign that you need to take care of your lifestyle. Men don't sit around worrying about heart disease, but they do worry about not being able, able to have sex. In addition to diet, exercise, and good quality sleep, statins can be particularly effective in improving vascular health for men who have erectile dysfunction. The earlier you start the healthy heart plan, the more your risk of developing heart disease decreases. For partners of men who have erectile dysfunction, the condition can present an opportunity to talk about taking steps to prevent heart disease and improve erectile dysfunction. Adapting the healthy heart plan to vascular disease. Number one, quit tobacco use and avoid secondhand smoke. Number two, Find out if you have exercise or weight lifting restrictions. Number three, modify your walking program. Number four, reach for a low LDL cholesterol target. Number five, know your family history. Number six, protect your feet if you have peripheral artery disease. Number seven, keep up the follow-up appointments. Long-term success with getting healthy sometimes follows a bumpy, uneven path, especially when it comes to adapting to a healthy way of eating. Many obstacles can keep you from reaching your nutritional goals. Learning to identify potential roadblocks and confront personal temptations is a key part of achieving success. To make it past the rough spots, it is important to have strategies ready to guide your responses as problems arise. Dash diet. DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop to Stop Hypertension. The DASH diet is a lifelong approach to healthy eating that is designed to help treat or prevent high blood pressure, that's hypertension. The diet encourages you to reduce the sodium in your diet and eat a variety of foods rich in nutrients that help lower blood pressure. The DASH diet emphasizes limiting sodium to 2300 milligrams a day. A modified version of the DASH diet sets sodium limits at 1500 milligrams a day. Eating a diet emphasizing fruits, vegetables and whole grains. Limiting red meat, sweets and added sugars. Increasing intake of foods rich in potassium, magnesium, and calcium. 
one of the best things you can do to keep your heart healthy is to be at a healthy weight if you are obese you are more likely to develop a number of serious health problems including high cholesterol high blood pressure and heart disease but do you know what a healthy weight is for you or maybe you need some help getting there body mass index bmi is a tool for indicating your weight state status the mathematical calculation takes into account both your weight and height bmi does not distinguish between fat and muscle but it more closely reflects the amount of body fat you have than does getting your weight measurement from a bathroom scale the healthy weight pyramid if you are looking for a fresh approach to weight loss the healthy weight pyramid is your answer the base of the pyramid focuses on generous amount of food that contain a small number of calories in a large volume of food particularly healthy fruits and vegetables as the categories of the pyramid get narrower you choose smaller amounts of food including whole grains lean protein and dairy healthy fats and even sweets you can eat more vegetables fruits less carbohydrates lesser protein and dairy products and least fats and last but not least is very minimal sweets above all daily physical activity is absolutely essential for preventing and conquering heart disease your health is in your hands